welcome to my channel. My name is Martine, and if you are new here, I do videos on Vedic astrology mainly, but also with some tropical insights. And I focus on both relationship and natal astrology. And if you like this video and you would like to hear more content from me, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. And also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, I do consultations on a wide variety of topics. Please check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. Thank you. So today's video is going to start the um, series that I said I was going to make on transits for 2022 for every ascendant. So like I promised, I basically made notes with each ascendant and I extracted to the first two signs that I'm going to cover in this series. The first one is Gemini and the second one is Virgo. What do you know? Okay, so both the Mercury ruled signs decided they wanted to be first. Okay, so I'm going to be doing Gemini today and next week I'm going to be doing Virgo. And I decided to break down um, the year into three separate um, time periods. The first one is from around January 1st to around um, April 22nd when Jupiter is in Aquarius, Saturn is in Capricorn. So it will be mainly based on Jupiter and Capricorn, although I'm also going to be looking at Rahu and a little bit of Pluto. Uh, when it comes to the transits, I mean. Okay, so this is the first period. The second period is for uh, April 22nd to around July 21st when Jupiter will be in Pisces, Saturn in Aquarius. And the last period is from around July 21st until the end of the year, so December 31st, 2022, when Jupiter will be in Pisces, Saturn in Capricorn. Uh, Rahu will start out by being in Taurus and then it will switch into Aries at the beginning of April 2022. So roughly, I think roughly April 3rd. Okay, and a few things before I get into it. Um, so once again, I did the nice charts with... Uh, um, you know, marking the planets in which houses they fall based on your ascendant. And I also colored the aspects that each planet makes. Namely, um, gray is Saturn's aspect, yellow is Jupiter's aspect, pink is Rahu's aspect, okay? Um, and I think, yeah, that's about it. I didn't cover, uh, I didn't color Ketu's aspects because Ketu is opposite Rahu, so... Uh, it's always going to be on the opposite side of where Rahu aspects, okay? So this is one thing. Another thing is, once again, when I say, uh, you know, when I mention a time frame and I say roughly July 21st, for instance, this is because in order to know exactly when the transit starts for you, you have to calculate a chart and also... Uh, introduce your geographic coordinates aka the city that you live in to actually um, see when the transit is actually going to start okay so it could be a little bit before or a little bit after depending on your coordinates okay okay so let me get straight into it so for the chart one phase which you're going to be seeing on the screen Okay, so like I mentioned, from around January 1st till April 22nd, 2022. Um, okay, first of all, can I just start by saying that both Jupiter and Saturn are malefics for Gemini Ascendant. So technically that would mean that the results of these transits shouldn't be particularly positive. Rahu and Ketu are uh, neutral, okay? But um, considering the fact that Jupiter is basically the great benefic and especially when it switches into Pisces, I will tend to take it as a predominantly positive transit, okay? Even though it's supposed to be a functional malefic for Gemini ascendant, okay? Um, so, right. This time there will be, so the first thing that I can say, okay, because Saturn is in the 8th house and Saturn rules the 8th and ninth houses. So 
to me, this shows that there's going to be some heavy responsibilities around 8th house themes. So 8th house is the house of joint ventures and joint finances. When I say joint, I mean particularly with the um, spouse or the long-term romantic partner, okay? But just for convenience, I'm going to be calling it spouse. Uh, but it could just be someone you're in a long-term relationship with, not necessarily um, like legally married. So this shows that this area of joint finances is going to be particularly heavy. It will require a lot of responsibility on your part. And um, it is also, however, going to bring some gains, but not without a lot of effort and a lot of diligence on your part. Because Pluto is also there, there will be um, some kind of transformation around this area, okay? And... Um, whether it's good for the good or for the bad, I couldn't really say. I guess you would have to look at the more specific personal transits in order to determine that. But basically, there's going to be some kind of major transformation connecting to connecting to this issue of joint finances. Another thing is that the eighth house is the house of the in-laws or the family of the spouse, the family of origin. So um, this is a time when there could be some difficulties surrounding the family of your spouse, um, some heaviness, some responsibilities that could be hanging heavily on you as well. Um, because Jupiter is in the ninth though, so wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Another thing, right, before I move on, another thing is that during this time, because Saturn rules the ninth house, this could also show that um, you will incur some kind of debt on account of your education, especially higher education. So this could be master's degree and up. Um, so not like college or, or undergraduate education, but something higher like a PhD, a master's, something like that. So you could be inquiring debt or maybe you already have debt and it will hang heavily on you during this time. Um, that's another explanation. Another thing is you could actually... Um, incur debt because of travel. So maybe you want to travel and you don't have the finances for it. So you might be tempted to take on loans or something or, you know, or get into some kind of a study abroad program that requires you to take on debt. So you need to be really careful about this because you have to be sure that you don't take on more than you can chew in terms of, you know, debt and finances and all that especially since neither of these planets are particularly friendly towards your ascendant. So that's something you should watch out for. Another thing is... On the positive side, Jupiter in the ninth house increases faith and optimism and it also increases the chances of travel. So whichever the situation may be, if you, uh, even if, if they imply extra expenses or, or whatever, um, it's a good thing, right? So like you will, you will have higher opportunities for travel during this time. And especially if you're a woman, you, and especially if the rest of your um, chart supports this, you might meet some kind of a love interest during a travel. So during a trip or during your pursuit of higher education. Um, another thing is you might be required to travel due to your work. That's another thing. Because Jupiter rules the 10th house and the 7th, which is the 10th from the 10th, according to the Bhavad Bhavam principle. So, um, or, you know, it could, this could be your job, this could be your business, whatever it is. Um, it could be that you are required to travel more because of your job during this time. And this is also also the time when you will be called upon to put a lot of effort and willpower in your career and in your social status, okay? And for good reason. So chances are you will feel it internally, like you will feel the need to particularly apply yourself, but it could also be an outside pressure that you see as a burden 
Um, but whichever the case is, you should definitely focus on your career because with Saturn aspecting the 10th house, um, basically the consequences of not being diligent about these things could be dire. And on top of that, uh, on the positive side is if you do focus on your career, if you are diligent and organized and everything that Saturn wants you to be, he will reward you tenfold in the future, okay? So you could be looking at promotions in the future or, um, you know, whichever the case, a, lit a raise, whichever the case may be. Um, basically, as long as you stay diligent and focused and hardworking, Saturn will reward you for that. And patient, of course. But, of course, you might be also a little bit frustrated because of this. So you will be feeling like you have to work really hard and maybe you feel like you're not being repaid properly for your efforts, okay? So this could be a frustrating time for you professionally. Um, Rahu in the 12th house, um, also aspecting the rest of the water houses, the 4th and the 8th house. This shows a strong interest in occult top topics, okay? Could also show a desire for you to really delve into um, things like meditation, things like isolating yourself, maybe. But the funny thing is, because this is Rahu, it could be coming more from a material desire or like... Um, you know, a desire for acquiring wealth rather than, or material pleasures or whatever, something material, rather than a desire to increase your spirituality, if that makes sense. So, like, maybe you could be getting into occult things, like, including astrology, including tarot, whatever, because you're hoping that it will increase your um, chances of getting more financially or finding love or whatever because the 12th house is also the house of bed pleasure so uh, there will be a particular influence uh, sorry emphasis on things like intimacy so you will feel a stronger desire for this during this time and um Again, you should be careful because the 12th is also the house of losses. So this is a time when you have to be careful, particularly with any foreign influences. So if you meet foreigners talking to you about good deals or something, um, be careful and because you might get into debt because of them or something. Uh, because Rahu is foreign influence and Rahu is also technology. So you could be acquiring losses because of technology during this time. Like, I don't know, um, maybe you decide to invest in a new TV or whatever. But if you had waited a few months, you may have gotten it way cheaper or something like that, you know. So basically during this time, you have to be careful around these things. Issues surrounding technology, surrounding foreign influences, foreigners, uh, because you could acquire losses because of them. Inquire. Acquire? Inquire? Whatever. <laughs> um, another thing is, uh, right, because it's a, the 12th house is also long distance travel, so you will feel a very strong need to travel. Um, this is like long tra long distance like and long duration, okay? So this is like intercontinental travel so you'll feel a strong need but you might feel frustrated during this time or like it doesn't mean that you cannot travel it's just that again taking into account the jupiter situation you there could be some hindrances or there could be obstacles to your travels or um there could be some frustrations like you might travel but you might incur you know incur debt because of that or some kind or maybe your um, in-laws somehow are making it difficult for you to travel, if that makes sense. Or maybe you have to travel because of your in-laws, even though it's not convenient for you. Something with in-laws and travel. Okay. Um, Jupiter aspects the first, the third, and the fifth houses. This shows good relations with neighbors, younger siblings, children, as well as a good time to pursue passion projects. So, yeah, definitely, especially with Saturn also there. Saturn aspecting the fifth also shows you need to put discipline into pursuing your passion projects, okay? So if you want, um, and also the fifth house is also the house of speculative 
investments, things like that. Like if you're into a stock broker, a stock broker, what do you call it? The the stock market, <laughs> brokerage, what do you call it? Um, yeah, investments or uh, investments of any kind. So speculative, this could be like even, uh, you know, playing the lottery. Um, this is a time when, again, you are required to be consistent and as informed as possible. Don't leave anything to chance and then you will maximize your chances of gaining because you do have the Jupiter aspect there. So there is a good chance for you to gain out of these things, but you have to be very informed and leave nothing to chance, basically. And... Of course, and again, you could have to um, discipline your children during this time if you have children, okay? And this is also potentially a good time for you to start a, a solid relationship, especially, uh, again, if you're single. Because especially in your case, Jupiter rules the fifth, the, sorry, the seventh house and it aspects the fifth, okay? So, especially if you have other configurations in the chart to support this, you have to, you, you need to watch out for these, okay? Because it could be a good time for you to start a relationship or to meet someone, maybe not necessarily start, but just to meet someone. Um, K2 in the sixth house shows a disinterest towards your day job and pets and subordinates and competition. So you need to be careful not to be carried away because of apathy because then it would just uh, could, it will potentially cause any existing problems to just get bigger without you even realizing so don't have this approach of you know sticking your head in the sand and pretending that nothing is wrong when things are wrong that's what i'm trying to say uh, because during this time you might be particularly prone to be kind of apathetic towards these issues and um you know uh, miss miss maybe some cues that you should pick up on you know like i don't know co-workers conspiring against you or like your pet developing a disease or you know all kinds of things stuff like that another thing is kid two in the six there can show some health problems okay so uh or at the very least it shows a vulnerability so you need to be extra careful with your health especially when it comes to your daily habits and do not neglect the importance of a healthy lifestyle because, again, this could potentially have disastrous um, consequences in your case with this transit, okay? Okay, and this is pretty much it. This is pretty much what I could say about the chart one phase, okay? So moving on to the chart two phase, the chart two is from around April 22nd to around July 21st, when Jupiter will be in Pisces, Saturn in Aquarius. Um, so, and Rahu will be in Aries, okay? So Saturn moves into the ninth house, which shows travel will be restricted during this time, okay? As well as anything connected to higher education could be that your in-laws or your spouse's family of origin is somehow restricting these areas. Um, or on the other hand, it could be that you may have to travel because of them and it will not be a pleasant experience because Saturn is about responsibility. So, you know, you could have to travel because of some kind of a emergency or some, some negative reason. Um, Jupiter in the 10th house shows a boost in career aspect of Jupiter on the second um, at the same time shows increase in cash flow during this time. You will have a tendency to come across as self-righteous and or arrogant during this time when you speak especially so be careful not to get into trouble at work because of this okay especially with superiors. Jupiter aspect in the fourth house shows that the home environment and relationship with your mother will improve with respect to the previous few months. If you have been looking to change your home, this is a good time to do it. This is also a good time to invest in real estate or just any anything to do with, you know, like bettering your home or perhaps opening a restaurant or a hotel business, although probably not the best times to do that. 
Um, but normally, under normal circumstances, I would have added that. Okay. Um, Rahu aspecting, no, sorry, Jupiter and Saturn aspecting the sixth house can show that your health issues will resolve as long as you apply yourself diligently to solving them, basically following the recommendations and everything, and also being really careful with your everyday habits and making sure that they don't hinder your health. Rahu aspecting the seventh could start brewing a feeling of dissatisfaction in your relationship if you are in a stable relationship. So you might be inclined to develop an infatuation for a foreigner uh, or, yeah, a foreigner, a person that you just, not necessarily a person that you just met, but a foreigner more specifically. So you need to be careful with that and don't be like having a wondering eye and all that. Um, Rahu will stay in Aries until the end of 2022. Okay, so this uh, this thing that I have said about Rahu, it also stands for the chart three phase. And also, because Rahu is in the 11th house, um, you, will, you will have a strong desire to mingle more or to expand your social network during this time, maybe not physically mingle, but you will feel the need to reach out and, um, you know, talk to friends and maybe meet new people, especially people of a foreign origin, okay? Um, aside from that, when it comes to your gains, you can become really impatient. So this is something that you need to watch out for, I guess. Again, in light of what I've said about Saturn teaching you to be disciplined, um, don't be too impatient. This will be a time when you, might, you know, again, if you're into investing or if you are, I don't know, playing the lottery or whatever it is that you are hoping will get you money, you might become particularly um, frustrated during this time when you don't see fast results, okay? Um, so this is to, to tell you that you should be patient and don't do anything you know, don't throw yourself headfirst into anything, any risky ventures, okay? Um, Keto in the fifth house will show disinterest towards romance, education, and your usual hobbies. And children. Um, so, yeah, kind of bad if you already have children. Be careful don't, not to neglect them. Um, okay, so this is as much as I could say for the chart two phase. Now the chart three phase, which is from around July, great, uh, from around July 21st to the end of the year when Jupiter will be in Pisces, Saturn in Capricorn. Okay, Rahu will, st will stay in Aries. So this time you have both Jupiter and Saturn aspecting the 10th house. So once again, Saturn is aspecting by third aspect which shows that you will need to be also very diligent around this time, okay? So chances are you will feel the need to apply yourself diligently and you will have more responsibilities maybe at work. Um, but because Jupiter is there as well, this shows that during this time you will definitely see your efforts paying off, okay, in the work department. Basically, you're going to be seeing that as the more you work, the the better the better your career gets. Like you, this could also be, translate into improving your finances as well since Jupiter and Saturn are both aspecting the second house from your ascendant as well. So, yeah, this is a good time for your career and your money situation, okay? And it's also a good time for your health because Jupiter is aspecting the 6th house alone okay um so this shows that if you've had any previous health problems chances are they will heal during this time okay and another thing is right aspect on the four stays the same uh right arahu's influence is pretty much the same because still aspects the air houses like i said it will stay in aries from april 22nd actually from around roughly april 3rd until the end of 2022 so all of that that i said previously stands for um 
okay and Saturn is in the eighth house again this will show a time of restriction and responsibility concerning the ninth house and the eighth house so once again this could be the family of the spouse this could be joint assets okay uh, or this could also be um, some kind of transformation or new responsibilities concerning um, occult issues or psychological issues. This could be like maybe you feel called to um, start therapy, start working on yourself psychologically. Um, but it could also just mean when it comes to joint ventures that you are called upon to be diligent and to learn as much as possible again if you're interested in things like investments and i don't know pension plans and all that this is a time when you will be called to learn as much as possible and be as thorough as possible on these particular subjects because if you do not do these things um saturn will cost you bitterly well i mean you know saturn is basically the hard taskmaster so any to anywhere it sits that's an area where you will have to really, really work hard for the money. <laughs> okay. Um, Jupiter on the 6th, aside from uh, aspecting, aside from improving your health, will also show that you will have better relations with your subordinates, if you have any subordinates, and um, also that you could be successful in competitions. And it's also a good time to... Uh, deal with your pets. So if you've had any problems connected to your pets during this time, they will um, get better, basically. Um, okay, and this is pretty much it. Okay, so this has been pretty much it, and once again, if you have enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, please comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give. And uh, also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, I do consultations on a wide variety of topics. Please check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. Thank you.